The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Charlie. And this is Nathan, and we will be your host for today. Welcome, welcome back to the podcast. We're so happy to have you here. Um, Last week we talked about persecution and how persecuted believers around the world are enduring such suffering and pain and difficulty uh, and still following Jesus in spite of it. And we hit on things like it's just basic following Jesus stuff like reading your Bible, prayer, uh, being a part of the local church, and even the persecution itself contributes Mm. to their ability to endure, which is crazy. If you haven't had a chance to go listen to that episode, um, there's some interesting, interesting things come out of that one. Uh, Anyway, uh, today, well, as we were recording that podcast, we thought about this poem, and we felt like this poem deserved its very own episode. And it's probably a short episode, but we felt all the same that it deserved its own episode because it's just so profound. And uh, before we get into it, though, we just wanted to quickly define what does it mean to suffer or what does it mean to have passion for? Um, Because ultimately, that's that's what we're talking about. We're talking about people who are just deeply and radically passionate about Jesus. Like I look at these believers that we've met or heard of around the globe who face this kind of extreme persecution, the most persecuted believers on the planet, they're passionate for Jesus. Mm. And uh, if you know root words of language, the word passion actually like comes from a word that means suffering. Mm. And like you think the passion of the Christ, the sufferings of the Christ. And um, uh, I think that the the writing or the poem that we'll share on this episode was birthed out of a place of passion as well. Mm. Uh, when you hear the words, I feel like they're anointed, full of the Spirit of God, and come from a place of passion. Mm. Uh, but what is passion? What is passion for Jesus, I think, is the question at hand. When you look at these lives, what is passion for Christ? And how do you... Like, we talked about ways that help them endure, but what is this passion for Jesus? Right. It almost <clears throat> seems like it's just a willingness to suffer for. Like these people are just so in love with Jesus that they're just willing to suffer for Jesus. But I think that it goes a little deeper than that. Yeah. Um, often people will define the word passion as uh, a, a goal you believe in so much that you're willing to suffer for it. Right. And to some degree, that's true. Right. Um, well, we're, we're not necessarily against that definition. To some degree, it's true. Um, yeah. Like you've got a goal and you're willing to suffer to yeah. reach that goal. You think about sports players, athletes, musicians, business owners, entrepreneurs. Like entrepreneurs, when they launch a business, everybody knows this in the business world for the first five years. They suffer for the success of their business because they're passionate about it. They will stay up day and night working extreme hours, taking on every responsibility, wearing every hat in the business to make sure it succeeds. They'll do anything it takes. Or a football player. They will train and train and train and train. They will work themselves sick, like training so hard because they're passionate about it. Or a musician. Practice, 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 write music, practice, practice, like till your fingers are going to fall off. Like they are facing things that don't feel good Mm. because they have a goal and they're passionate about that. But is the phrase willingness to endure the right phrase when we talk about passion for Jesus. Um, There's this scripture, 2 Corinthians 12. Nate, maybe you can read it with your Bible there. All right, 2 Corinthians 12, it says... Verse 10, right? Yeah, verse 10. This is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It, isn't that interesting that he uses the word delight? Yeah. How crazy is that? 
Yeah. He takes pleasure, the NLT says, in that. He delights. Like, man, what's the last thing you delighted in? Like, this is the best thing ever. Like, it chocolate cake for dessert. I don't straight know. up, I was about to say chocolate cake. <laughs> On July 4th, my family had this insanely Ooh. rich, like, <clears throat> truffle chocolate cake. Oh, my goodness. That was it's delicious. good. It was delightful. Like, what do you delight in? And Paul writes, in the midst of his sufferings, he delights. Mm. I delight in my weakness, in the insults, in the hardships, in the persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. Mm. So it's not just something you're willing to endure. It's what you'll delight in the suffering and enduring for the sake of Christ. Like, yeah. I'm so loved by Jesus and he's with me and I get to be a part of his sufferings. I take delight in that. Mm. And uh, I think as I look at all these believers around the world who are suffering for the gospel and for Jesus, they delight. It's true. In Christ. Like anyone that I've met, they don't seem like a person that is prone to discouragement it, like, yes, things come at them, but they're not walking around as defeated people. Right. It's uh, when you look at somebody who's defeated, you can see it on their face. Yeah. Right? Like you can, like it, there's almost like a like a tone in their body language, in the way that they live their life. It's like mm. you can look at them and see that they're discouraged of all of the persecuted believers I've ever met. I haven't met one. I, and I mean, I haven't met them all. But I haven't, I've yet to meet one who has that, that like downtrodden. Like a defeated person. Yeah, they're not. They, they're walking around joy filled and it might not always be a smile on their face, but they're like, even in the midst of insane hardship and difficulty, they're like light. You know, it's like, there's almost a heaviness with those who are downtrodden. It's like they're light, uh, like, yeah, like uh, weight wise light. We, we just spent time with a ministry friend and partner. Uh, this last week, who's from a Buddhist nation. Yeah. He's been beaten for the gospel. He actually came out of Hinduism, which also exists in his nation, smaller than the the Buddhist. numbers of Buddhists there. Um, but Christianity is quite low. Um, a lot of tribes and ethnic people groups that are still unreached in that nation. And when he came to Christ, a fascinating testimony it was through an itinerant evangelist preacher who showed up and did an event in the city. And as a Hindu, he was curious and heard the gospel preached with hey you can be secure in christ you don't have to fear your eternal fate like right. hindus don't know we, we actually had him on the ep- uh, yeah. oh, an episode uh, a, a long time ago you'd have to dig in the archives back to our world views series and he shared his testimony from hinduism to christianity yeah but uh he heard the gospel preached through an evangelist who traveled to his nation and he was compelled yeah. By Jesus gave his life to Christ, realizing he could have security for his eternal fate in Christ and not fear like, will I do a good enough enough good enough things and maybe I don't know if I'll make it. Because there is no security no. in Hinduism or Buddhism. Or Islam. Yeah. There's no security. <laughs> you, you you might make it, you might not make it. Who's even to say? if you follow all the rules. Right. So he was compelled, gave his life to Jesus and became really passionate mm. for Christ, delighting in everything that he could face for Christ's sake. And he started sharing the gospel different places. And one time he was rounded up and beaten for Christ. And uh, amazingly, because he delights in this, he forgave that guy and loved that guy and still has a relationship with this guy years and years later. Mm. Uh, And this guy was amazed that he would even talk to him after that. Mm. Um, That is the kind of passion we're talking about. It's It's not just endurance. It's delighting. Delight. So... I, you've maybe heard of this um, writing before. Wait, before we get yeah. there, <clears throat> what gives rise to a delight versus an endurance? Because I don't want people to get the mis the the misunderstanding that somehow they dig deep within themselves necessarily, and it's like I choose to delight in my suffering. Maybe there's an element of that. What do you think? Like, what gives rise to delight versus endurance? I think it's perspective. Okay. So, um, that I actually have the privilege of suffering and sharing in the fellowship of sufferings of Jesus himself. Mm. I think, I think you're right. But I also think that like, there's just something inherent in being a follower of Jesus and having the Holy Spirit in you and encountering persecution Mm -hmm. and experiencing that joy. Like, uh, in the book of Acts, when the disciples get persecuted, 
like these guys get beat and whipped and blah 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 and they go to they go away rejoicing mm-hmm. like what gives rise to that i don't think it's a choice necessarily i think there, it is there's sometimes, an el- though. i'm not saying it's not not a choice i'm saying there's an element of choice but it seems to me that the disciples were experiencing something that wasn't necessarily only from inside of them i think that the holy spirit gave rise to right. that rejoicing inside of them i agree because it's uh i think i quoted this on the last episode last week um peter says if you're insulted for the sake of christ you are blessed for the spirit right. of god and of glory rests on you and that's happened to me where i've been insulted for jesus and i was filled with unexplainable joy Right. Um, and that's what I mean. But, that's why it's not necessarily a choice. That, well, because it, it's unexplainable. It's like. I think that's the result of. But it, what rises to the. Before that. Right. Because you, you have still to, have to face it. Right. You do have to choose to face it. So you, don't get me wrong there. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can choose to cower back. Right. But Hebrews says we're not those who cower back, we're right. those who move forward. But though, But these followers of Jesus who have chosen to engage with that yeah. fully. Somehow, some way, they go away from those times rejoicing yeah. and delighting in their suffering. I mean, Second Corinthians, where we were reading before chapter 12, in that those passages, those verses says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. So his power right. is perfected in our weakness and our need for him. I, and per- so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. So his choice is to engage the suffering and be glad about it. Right. And in the midst of his choice of doing that, it's so that the power of Christ can work through me. Right. I, I, I th- I've heard story after story of people who um, are martyred or about to be martyred. And as they're being martyred, it's not anxiety or worry or f- terror on their face. It's peace. And it's like, where does that peace come from? Mm. That That peace can only come from the Holy Spirit because... No one just goes to their death like peaceful. Yeah, I, uh, I think, yeah, I, I think there's multiple factors. So I think part of that is engaging God, saying yes to Him, counting the cost, and saying the joy in His presence is worth it, and obedience and my love for Him is greater. And we just talked about. I think you're at, you're asking what gives rise as the outflow. I think this is the outflow of the rise, which is right. the joy of the spirit of God. Right. But I think the rise of the pre persecution or the middle of the persecution, what gives rise to the persecution itself is a choice. Well, that's proclaiming Jesus. Right. But what gives rise to the strength in the midst of it and the delighting in the midst of it, I think is what we talked about on the last episode. It's prayer. Right. It's the word of God. It's the fellowship with other believers and seeing the lostness and being compelled by that, Mm -hmm. that gives rise to the delighting in the midst of it. And when you delight in the midst of it, it gives rise to this unexplainable joy. Wow, that got complicated, but it's pretty simple. I, I think I think it's clear. <laughs> I think it's clear, but it it was complex. <clears throat> so, um, all that to say, joy comes in the midst as we delight. I mm-hmm. think delighting can be a choice, um, because we can choose not to delight. We can choose to have a pity party. Mm. Oh, woe is me that I have to face this. Um, There are examples of that in the scripture too. That's true. So uh, I hope that I'll be the one when difficulty comes that I delight. Mm. When suffering comes, I delight. I look at Jesus and say, wow, I get to suffer with him. Mm. All these believers we've talked about and others, um, this is actually the title of the, the writing if we're ready to go there. Yeah, I think so. This poem. I would consider them part of the fellowship of the unashamed. Hmm. And so we encourage you, listen to this writing, be challenged, be convicted, be encouraged, be uplifted, and be fueled to go into the harvest wherever your feet are. And uh, just let these words impact you and uh, let God speak to you as he desires. Um, this this was actually written... Uh, by a pastor in Africa, most likely. Um, And the story goes that he was given the choice to either renounce Christ or be killed. Passion for Jesus was his choice or not. And he was not of those who cowered back 
but of those who said yes to Jesus and went forward in full faith and said, I must stand for Christ. And he was martyred and killed on the spot. Um, some people have said that his house was burned down in that process. And they found underneath a bowl, underneath a wet rag, his Bible. And in the pages of his Bible, they found this writing. And they said that he wrote this the night before he was martyred. Mm. So powerful story, powerful moment. It was written by somebody who was passionate for Christ, who said, I love Jesus so much. I will delight in being counted among those who be killed with him mm. or for him. So the fellowship of the unashamed. Let let these words strike you however God wants, and uh, we'll, we'll leave you with these words of this poem and writing. I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, or slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed, my present makes sense, and my future is is secure. I am finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, cheap giving, and dwarfed goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I now live by presence, lean by faith, love by patience, lift by prayer, and labor by power. My pace is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions few, my guide reliable, my mission clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, lured away, turned back, diluted, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until heaven returns, give until I drop, preach until all know, and work until he comes. And when he comes to get his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. My colors will be clear. <laughs>